Hi folks, welcome to the preparedhomestead.com. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. A little brisk morning, it's supposed to be about 60 today, so that's pretty amazing for first week of February. Um, even around here, we've been getting pretty close to record highs around here. Um, so apparently we're gonna be spending billions of dollars and sending it to Ukraine and Israel. Not a big surprise, right? I don't think anyone is shocked by that. I mean, it's okay for you to pay a little bit more in gas, a little bit more for your loaf of bread and everything else that you buy in your life. We gotta send money all over the place because, well, that's how we make the, the rich wealthier. But that's not really what I'm here to talk about today. I wanna tell you folks a story. It's, it's story time with Travis. And I know this is probably gonna be boring. It's not exciting. It's not cool, tactical stuff and all that kind of stuff. But I wanna tell you a story and I hope that most of you stick around and listen to it. <clears throat> this channel, the things that I say and do on here, the, the whole objective, really, one of the most primary things that I'm trying to do on here is to Encourage people to not just prepare, but to, to realize that we've got to prepare our community, build friendships and relationships around us, and to take those relationships and that tribe and, and be as self-sufficient as possible and be as ready as possible for the, the coming, well, the coming storm, really, the, the changes that are upon us. And that's been a, a very primary objective of this channel and the things that I do. And about, well, about two years ago, I started really pushing the message that um, we have to kind of circle the wagons. That it was time to kind of fortify ourselves and circle the wagons, find out who's, who's on our team, and kind of bring them in and start making serious preparations for the collapse. This is something I've, I've been talking about for a very long time, if you have been watching me at all. And I mix that in with, you know, news, opinion, and just tips and things of how to do it and encouragement along the way to, for you to also be doing this thing and not just watching someone talk about it. Shortly after I really started pushing that message, I started to realize that our community or our walls of protection couldn't just extend to only our borders, our gate, our property line. That they had to really extend beyond that. Even in, in the military, the, the area of defense that you secure, that, that perimeter around you, doesn't just end at the gate. It doesn't just end at the, the walls of the, the fortress. It has to go out and beyond that. And so I started realizing that we really needed to work on our greater communities, not just the people that are like-minded in our little mag, but do our best to reach out to the people around us so that when things collapse and fall apart and people get all ugly and bad, there's less of them right around our, our perimeter. And so quietly, and when I say quietly, I mean not on YouTube. I wasn't really talking about it. But here in my local area, I started doing as much work as I could to reach out to just people around me, business owners, large property owners, people of, you know, in a small community like this, that people that know people kind of thing. And building friendships and relationships with them, offering to help them out, get to know them, let them know that Myself and others are around, and if you needed anything, we're there for you. And started building those relationships. I also started meeting privately with people, explaining to them how we, we really need to do this. We need to come up with a way to kind of build a, a community outside of a community, a system outside of a system. And I have talked about that. I've used the phrase cultural secession. I've told you that we have to build alternative systems because it's gonna be much bigger than just 
you know, how much preps, how much freeze-dried food and beans and rice you have in the, you know, the corner closet, or even bullets. We have to learn how to rebuild a system that is not dependent upon all of the stuff that's gonna collapse. So I started having meetings with people, talking it up, really pushing this concept. And along the way, our, our community here, our preparedness, homesteading community, we really started working towards that. Started figuring out how we could barter, trade, use alternative currencies, have open markets, working on education in, in the way of encouraging homeschooling and encouraging other types of classes that we have. We teach and have people in our community that are knowledgeable and stuff, teach everything from you know, gardening, solar power, to you know, self-defense and medical classes, kind of building our, our own little education system. And I started to realize that there was a lot of resources uh, with the people that we were working with, our, our community. There were so many people that were so knowledgeable, had such colorful backgrounds and, and lots of expertise. And I said, you know, we, we really need to take that and, and build not just a system that, you know, we can teach and purchase and stuff, but a system we can really help. Take the idea of a mutual assistance group, which is where a group of people agree to come help each other and kind of expand upon that and build something like what already exists in the you know, emergency medical uh, and just public service community, but build it kind of outside of that. And so we started talking about that. We started talking about, you know, what would happen in our little community, our neck of the woods, uh, here in this little corner of the, the Missouri Ozarks, if things fell apart and there wasn't police and fire and medical and all this other stuff, we would need to, to rely on each other. And so we started training and talking about that. Along the way, we started realizing that this really was a, 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 an alternative to the, to the system. This really was a, a true way to not just prepare, but to give back and, and help others and, and help them kind of get ready for what's coming. And because, you know, preparedness and, and getting ready for collapse, it, it's not just going out every, you know, couple of weekends a month and stuff and, and just running around the woods and target shooting. I mean, that's, that's part of it. I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying it's not the only thing. That's the fun thing, right? That's the stuff that's cool. That's the stuff that gets lots of views. I mean, the it's even called a thing, the, the gun tubers on YouTube. That That's a big, big thing. Those guys, they get millions and millions of views and make lots and lots of money. I'm sure most of you are familiar with some of them. This kind of stuff is not as exciting. It doesn't, it doesn't catch the eye. It doesn't you know, get your blood pumping. But the reality is it's the stuff that's needed. Because right now, everywhere, these things are needed. Security and protection and medical and response and disasters, injuries, all these things happen on a daily basis. And, and we're dependent upon them as a society to keep things running. And what happens when those things go away? Not just that the bad people, the marauders, the invaders, the, but just the normal stuff, just the normal day-to-day -day stuff. What happens when that goes away? And so we started trying to build a system, a group of people that could handle that when everything falls apart. It wasn't too long after that that we realized, you know, why wait until everything falls apart? Why not do, start doing that stuff now? Most of these small rural communities across the country are very underfunded and undermanned. It's not that they're not, they don't have quality uh, training or quality people. It's just they don't have enough. They don't have enough to run things. They don't have enough to really, you know, give great service. And so we started working on a few months back how we could take this concept of this group of people, this mutual aid group, this team that would take care of our own when things fall apart here in our community and do it now. So we started researching the legality of it, 
we started going through certifications because while you don't need a certification to do medical and all that when the doo-doo hits the fan it's kind of the only way to really do it nowadays you know you're not going to be accepted as someone that can do all of these different tasks if you don't have a little documentation i don't think it's all that great and necessary but it's part of the optics and so we realized we had to do that and so for months now many of us have been working on that whether it's getting these certifications or recertifying ourselves because we've had it in the past so that we could be looked upon as a professional group of people not just a capable group of people so we made that proposition to the local fire department as many of you know i'm sure you've grown tired of me talking talking about it and they jumped on it because they realized that we're not here to make money. None of us do. It's all volunteer. I don't get paid. No one gets paid. In fact, uh, every one of us in our team has contributed our own personal money to make this happen because there's no public funding for it. But we want it to happen because we live in this community too. These are our neighbors. These are the people that we want to build relationships with. We don't want to have to deal with them in some bad way after everything falls apart. We want to pull together and have a real community and a real chance of, of success and survival. And so this is a way to, to reach out to them, to build relationships even further, and to help and to give back to our community. Because, like I said, this is our community too. This area we live in, the area you live in, it's your community. And so we want to give back to it. And we feel that because we're actively out there doing it. We're not just training to do these things. We're not just talking and planning to do these things. We're actually out there actively. We're actually out there giving medical aid to people. We're giving CPR. We're, we're building relationships with all kinds of people locally. We're going out there and putting out wildland fires and clearing debris, and all kinds of things. That's the best kind of training there is. And it makes the team more real. It makes us not just something that could exist when things fall apart, but that do exist now. And when things do fall apart, not only will our team, our people, already be prepared. They're ready. They've got experience. They know how to act. They know what to do. There'll be more and more people around us that will be willing to participate and be part of us because we've built those relationships. It's a small community. It doesn't take very long to get to know a lot of people. And so a lot of people have been complaining, not everybody. A lot of you are pretty excited at what we're doing. And you've prayed over us. You've given us your blessings. You've even donated your dollars to what we're doing. And I'm greatly appreciative. And so is everyone else. And others, they're concerned. They don't know why I'm talking about this all the time. Why it's such a big deal. For me, it's a big deal, not because it's something new and cool, but because our group, our family here, our community, is proving to everyone that preparedness, self-sufficiency, building alternative systems, it's more than just talk. It's more than just something you, you get on and make a video about and talk about. It's something you actually do. And most all of you, including myself, could turn off the internet, turn off the TVs, turn off the news and everything right now, and you would know things are bad. In other words, you don't need to see or hear anything else to know that things are bad, to know that it is collapsing, to know that there's millions born across the border, to know that the odds are ever increasing of some type of attack here in the United States because of that and many other factors. We know these things. And I worry sometimes that I myself even am a, a big contributor to the fact that people aren't doing the things they need to do to get ready. They're just addicted to consuming all the terrifying news about it. And I don't wanna be part of that. I'm still, of course, gonna talk about it, but I'll also be blending it in with encouragement and more ideas and more examples. I don't get on here and, I talk, and talk about 
what we're doing here locally to brag. I get on here and talk about what we're doing locally to encourage you. To encourage you that there are still good people out there. There are, there are people that care about their communities. There's people that are completely aware of what's going on in the world. They just don't know what to do. And maybe creating something like this, you can give them that opportunity. That opportunity to actually build strength in their communities. <clears throat> For bad times, regardless of what those bad times are. It could just be a tornado or a train derailment. Or it could be an all-out collapse. Most people, I think, they just need that. Not everybody's a leader. And folks, we need to be those leaders. We need to be the people that are teaching our communities that, because, you know, I, I think it's a duty. It's definitely, I think, a biblical duty to, to give back and to, to, to show, to shine the Father's light in this world and to show brotherly love. But I think it's also a duty to us because, for us because we've known about this all along. You know, most of the people in our areas, they're just kind of starting to wake up and realize how bad it is. You and I have known about it. And we have the, the skill and the knowledge to do something about it. And this is a way to do something about it. And it's a way to do something about it and not look like you're ridiculous and radical. And, and people wonder if this is, you know, just jumping from one danger thing to the next danger thing. You know, I've, I've been asked over the last couple of years, you know, are you trying to start a militia? Are you trying to do this? And I, no, not against any of that kind of stuff. I think it's completely acceptable. And I support the, all of that as long as it's, it's lawful or at least moral. Uh, <clears throat> I, I get it. But the problem with a lot of those kind of groups and things is they go out and train, but they don't really do anything. They're not giving back to their community. They're not already establishing themselves. You know, it's kind of like myself and just about every other prepper says that you better build your mag, your community now, because when it all falls apart, it's going to be near impossible to really trust people at that point to build relationships. Well, we have to do that now also with our greater community. We have to expand our, our boundary of protection and defense beyond just our, our fences, our, our gates, our, our, our little home border castle walls. And so that's what we're doing. And we're strengthening our community. We're giving back to our community. We're, <clears throat> and ourselves as individuals are becoming better skilled at what we're doing. And we're really, we're doing this without any outside help. No government funding, nothing like that. And so when it all falls apart, our team and other people like us we're much more equipped to handle things falling apart. We know what to do, and we just keep going into action like we do every day. So for those of you that don't understand why there's all this change, why the videos are not as consistent, well, part of that is, as I'm taking a, a fire station that hasn't been open for business in almost a decade, and we're having to rebuild it and form a team. It takes a lot of work and no pay. Trust me, I'm not doing it to get rich. I'm making less money because of this. I'm, I'm putting out less videos and less content, so it makes me less money, and I'm spending money. But it's not going to last forever. You know, a few weeks of throwing all my energy into it. My wife understands it. My family understands it. I'm gone every day just about from sun up to sundown, and they get the need and the importance of doing this right now because we don't have a lot of time left. I got to get this going. And so our team feels that same way. Once we kind of get our head above water and things normalize, the content will normalize also. But I just want you to know that I believe wholeheartedly this is the kind of stuff we should be doing. Building relationships and taking our skills and our abilities and putting them to good use now so that when things do happen we're already well established and our skills have been honed because of the experiences that we've gotten and I truly believe that this is one of the best ways that we can build those alternative systems that we've all talked about so no my my message hasn't changed and my my opinions all that Nothing's new. This stuff has been happening behind the scenes for well over a year now. It's just finally coming to fruition. 
and I try to share it with you to encourage you to do something similar. You don't have to do this, but do something similar to build relationships and systems in your area. So when things fall apart, you're gonna be much better equipped to handle them, not just as individuals, but as people around you. Folks, it's time to get your houses in order and to prepare yourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.